Love is an amazing thing, and there are so many circumstances that bring people together. But do people get married because of love all the time? <laughs> This man's name is Venet, and this woman's name is Anwarit. These two live in the same house as husband and wife, but would you believe me if I told you that they are a stepmother and stepson? Anwarit, whom we can refer to as stepmother, and Venet, who we can also refer to as the stepson, who live together as husband and wife. In other words, this woman is a mother and a wife to his stepson at the same time. They have been wife and husband for more than 20 years and have three children. After hearing this story, I asked my storyteller if it was not a movie he had watched or a story he had read in a book. Therefore, he is trying to tell it as if it's real. Alas, it really has happened. If you thought that it was a fiction story, then here's the full reality story. This information is not fiction. Everyone who lives in this area knows about it. So, it's a true story and we're all used to it. It has become a regular thing. The strange thing about this story is that this stepson was married to his stepmother. Yet, he already had another wife with whom they had three more children. But why had this stepson desired to marry his stepmother? Had his first wife allowed it to happen? And what was the reaction of his neighbors? When I was in Congo, people kept telling me a strange story about a man living in the countryside of South Kivu who married his stepmother and had two children with her. It was so hard for me to accept that these things had happened. That is why I suddenly had the urge to meet this family face to face to talk to them. So I took a trip to Kabali territory where this family resides. My name is Venet. I am 88 years old. I was born here in Congo. My parents moved here when I was young. My father at that time had one wife who is my mother by birth. After some time, he married another woman. Her name was Mwamulua, who was my mother's aunt. She had three daughters with my father. They never had a son. A few years later, my father died. But before he died, he called me and said, My son, you are my firstborn. You're the one from whom I learned to produce children. I leave my wife and the three daughters I had with her to you. Sit on my chair as the father of the family because I am dying. At that time, I denied my father that I could not marry his wife. Therefore, my father told me I must marry her because he had never had a son with her. As a result, she should be my wife without a doubt. Also, you know I took her from your mother's family, so you shouldn't have a problem making her your wife. I swore to him that I could not marry a woman married to another man. Then my father told me that if I refuse, he would curse me out of the family. He said to me, I was unable to bear a son with her, and if I wake up dead, she will marry another man, and my children would die. So that's why you should marry her and have young ones to these girls. And that's how I ended up marrying my stepmother. This story is well known in the whole area, and most people who live here say that it was like a culture before the arrival of Christianity in this area. In this area, many people have experienced this kind of thing. However, nowadays, it has changed a lot, because some religions came and opposed the tradition of inheriting the father's wife if he dies without giving birth to a son in his second marriage, since men in this area like to marry many wives. <laughs> My name is Emmanuel. I know that family and its story because his late father was my servant in the Grand Seminary. He was married to his first wife, but that wife died. Then he married a second wife, whom he left to his eldest son. So, in the culture at the time, they say that if your father marries another woman, but that woman does not give birth to a son, one of the sons born from the first woman must marry her after the father's death. So, this second woman never gave birth to a son in this family. 
Then it says that even though his father had given her dowry, he gave another one when he was going to live with his stepmother, and he said that he got along well with the first woman he had married. Today, Venant is raising the children his father left and all the children he had with his stepmother. Everyone knows it. Even the mayor of the area where they live is aware because these children and the stepmother are in Venant's family book. <laughs> My father had given a dowry for the three children he had with my stepmother. After my father died when we got married, I also gave another dowry to the two children I had with her. Both of these dowries were accepted by one family. The dowry we offered in our culture equals one cow and four goats. My father had offered a dowry of one cow and five goats. I gave one cow and four goats. However, my stepmother got along very well with my first wife. My name is Anwarit. I got married to Venant after his father's death, because my late husband was also his father. When he died, he told me not to leave and that his son would come to get me. Since I felt like I was still young, like my stepson, I had no problem living with him. So I started falling for him and we made a family. Until today, we have two daughters together with the other three elders I had with my late husband. These two have reached the age of retirement and live peacefully together. They are a loving couple. In their home, there are old houses that looked like they were built in the early years. Even if they still walk around holding hands, it is visible to anyone that they are getting weaker because they're getting older and older. They can no longer do the work of farming and breeding as they used to. Venant insists that his wives have never had any problem with each other, saying that his two wives attend church together, which goes the same for the child. They all live together peacefully. <laughs> I have a perfect relationship with my husband. I never miss my late husband because Venant cares a lot about me. He gives me gifts and shops for me. Nowadays, this culture of a son marrying his stepmother has ended. In the early times, they did it with no shame. But nowadays, some of this area's residents insist that it is a very shameful thing to do. I am pretty sure that nowadays no son would marry his stepmother at all. It is a shame. In the early times, people did whatever they wanted because they didn't know better. They lived in ignorance and darkness. But today, religions have come and taught people since no religion allows such a thing. When Venant's daughter is going to get married, he says on that day he slaughters a goat, gives one half of the goat meat to the first wife and another half to the second wife to show that he favors them the same way. Venant says that he trained his wives to live together peacefully. Venant's stepmother lived with his father for 22 years before the father left her to Venant. Although the son doesn't clearly remember how long he has been married to his stepmother but argues that it's a very long time. Today, Venant and Anwarit have been living together as parent and child because of the history and culture of their motherland. Story by Janti Shamamba. Thanks for watching. This is Aframax English. Please remember to subscribe for more videos.